Shalom. Today I like to I like to speak about the blessing to Judah, especially one line, one line of this blessing that for centuries people have been discussing and fighting about in controversies that 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 between stages between religions. Let's look at the blessing itself. The blessing starts out says that Yehuda, missing a yud here, but Yehuda. You, Judah, your brother shall praise you. Your hand shall be on the nape of your foes. Your father's son shall be bowed low to you. You are going to be the leader. And as a leader, you're going to be like a lion. How you will be like a lion? Judah, a lion's whelp. Oh, pray, my son, have you grown? He crouch, crouches, lies down like a lion. Like a lion who dare rouses him up. In the Hebrew, it talks about the Yehuda. He, he, takes his, goes all over his food, but then crouches down. Meaning that the end, the result is not that he's going to rip you apart. He crouches over you, hovers over you, empowers you, but then he lies down. Be committed, who's gonna rise him up? Meaning he's not going to, the end goal of Judah is not to overpower his enemies and destroy them. It's yes to show his strength, Yes, to overpower them, but then not to over to show destroy them, rather to say, now we can live in peace. And this may be connected to the next verse that has so much controversy. Lo Yasur Shevam Yehuda, the scepter shall not depart from Judah. ben Raglav, nor the ruler's staff between his feet. Ad ki ad ki Shiloh, until he comes to Shiloh. But lo yikatamim, there he'll gather nations. What does this mean? This has lots of theological discussions. Does it mean that Judah, Judah is going to be the king until Shiloh and then no more after that? He won't be. Does that open up another idea that will be a new king? That's how the Christian uh, for many years understood this verse. However, there's a lot of interesting, uh, it's, you know, the the, Difficult, difficult this verse that, that Judah, that Jacob is saying, you're going to be the king, the leader, until one day you won't be. It doesn't seem to be the, 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 the spirit of the verses. I'm going to suggest another, another um, translation of this verse until he comes to Shiloh. The Shiloh perhaps is not a place. Actually, Shiloh, every time it's written in Torah, it's written with a vav. And here it's written without a vav. It's where it actually it sounds like Shiloh, it'll be a present for him. That's another way to read this verse. It's actually the way it's spelled. And this connects us to two places in Tanakh. First is Psalm 76. There seems to be a psalm written in, in for Judah as well, because the whole psalm is discussing Judah. It starts out saying, God has made himself known in Judah. Noda be Huda Elohim. The Israel Gadol Shema, his name is great in Israel. And, and Salem, or Jerusalem, became his abode, Zion, his den. Den is obviously a word that connects to lions as well. There he broke his fiery arrows of the bow, the shield, and the sword of the, of the war. Here, again, you're talking about Judah being him the leader of war. You were, you were beautiful, glorious on the mountain of prey. He again, use the word, same word, Hare Teref the word, the prey of the lions. So this psalm seems to be discussing Judah in a poetic way. And we get to the, towards the end of the psalm. It says, the fierce of the men shall acknowledge you when you gird, gird on the last bit of furry, which we talked about as well. Judah's gonna, wants people to acknowledge his presence. But then the last end goal of Judah is not to destroy his enemies. It's just to overpower them to say, leave us alone. And therefore what happened in the Psalm, it seems to be interpretation of the word Shiloh. It says, make vows and pray then to the Lord your God, the people, the nations, well, that after they see Judah's strength, will pay, make vows, and they'll bring them to Hashem in the temple, in Salem, in Beit HaMikdash, in Jerusalem, in Judah's area. All who are around him shall bring tribute to the awesome one. Tribute is shy. Shai Lemore, Shai Lo. If you look at the 
JPS translation of this verse. He, he translates in the same way. So that tribute shall come to him. When he says Shiloh, tribute to him, following the Midrash and Isaiah 18.7, and homage of the people be his. This is the end goal of Judah. And Isaiah 18.7, which is pointed out here, says it beautifully. In that time, tribute shall be brought to the Lord of hosts from a people far and remote, from a people thus thrust forth in a way, a nation of gibber and chatter whose land is cut off by streams at the place where the name of Hashem, the Lord of hosts, abides at Mount Zion. And this is the goal of Judah. And this is the goal of Judaism. It's not that we want to conquer the world. We want to destroy our strength as a nation in order that the world will leave us, not try to attack us, and then come to acknowledge the God, our God, by giving, when they see our strength, they'll then come and bring in, bring tr tributes and gifts to Jerusalem, to Mount, and the place where the name of Lord of hosts abides at Mount Zion. Thank you very much, and Shabbat Shalom.